Hello everybody, I'm Conquering History Games and welcome to I think part 39, uh, maybe the finale of my uh, Hearts of Iron 4, The New Order, the United States of America campaign. Just the first that I'll ever do. Um, we're definitely going to do more in the future. Uh, I've been kind of thinking about who I want it to be and I think I want to go, I want to kind of swing in the opposite direction and go get, get chaotic and crazy. Maybe find out how we get Yaki in charge or something because... LBJ, at least at the time of this recording, it's my understanding that there's been some bugs with him. So my Texas heart will have to wait. Um, but maybe we'll do Gus Hall. Maybe we'll do Wallace. I was actually thinking about doing Wallace on a live stream. But it would have to be on this save file or something or else then I'd have to go through everything again. I don't know. I'll think about it. Certainly have no problem playing this more. Uh, okay, new national focus time. Fortify the OFN. Um, even in negotiations between the superpowers, America is made stronger by the presence and support of its allies in the OFN. They are partners, not the feudal liege lords of Germany or the colonial kleptocracies of the Japanese. And even if they do not have a seat at the table, they deserve to be consulted and kept informed of where we seek to lead the OFN to the ultimate goal of our nuclear diplomacy. If not peace in our time, then at least peace through strength. <sighs> We're really almost there. <laughs> Okay, so Ares is not going to be ready to go until after this is done anyway, so, um... I don't know, you know what, let's let's purchase the uranium from our from our allies, just to hook them up. Because they haven't done anything. That's not true, South Africa was obviously a big part of the war, and Australia's been alongside us every step of the way. Heck, it was the Aussies, who you may remember, uh, took a Quellamane back after, uh, after it was raped. By, um, by Huttig. Gosh, that seems like a million years ago. What a long, strange trip it's been in this campaign. Oh, uh, yeah. Hmm. Increase the spending cap. Yeah, we don't have to do that. Civilian austerity's gone. Well, bring it back then, why don't we? Wait, 604 billion. Didn't we have more than that a minute ago? Hmm. I'm just trying to see if we're at all getting into a space where uh, we can eventually catch up on the debt, or are we just saying screw you to whoever our successor is going to be one day. They're just tough titty kitty. You got to deal with this. Not my problem. Let's see. I think this will time out nicely that we'll be able to buy everything from everyone in the end. Hmm. Okay. So, <laughs> sorry, I got kind of quiet because it's just now we're just, uh, we're waiting. What ended up happening in the rest of the world? So, yeah, that's right. They never did end up taking Switzerland, uh, Goering. I do wonder what ended up, what was the deal that happened with him. I know some of you probably told me in the comments back on the video where Goering was cooed or whatever the heck happened where they switched from, uh, National Socialism to Ultra Nationalism, but I do wonder. He probably was cooed, because I know in live streams people have told me that Goering, it's actually impossible to do Goering's tree, and not in a, oh, it's super hard to win kind of way, but in that it is an actual impossibility. So he probably got cooed or assassinated or something. I'm guessing. Yeah, the. <laughs> Okay, a fragile peace. America now maintains the means to destroy its enemies a thousand times over, to take every nuclear weapon in their arsenal and match it, and then some. The quantitative and qualitative superiority of our atomic arsenal is manifestly clear, and our enemies challenge it at their own peril. With our nuclear superiority as an article of faith amongst the American public, surely we can afford to be magnanimous. Through the strategic arms limitation talks, we hope to convince the superpowers to take a step back from the precipice of oblivion. We do not seek the adulation of Germany and Japan, only that their representatives come to the table as reasonable men to promise the world that the sun will rise tomorrow. And so we're going to get the nuclear disarmament negotiations event. But uh, yeah, wow, we're going to go from ray of hope to daring dream. Remember, remember when we had the American malaise? Wait, where is that event? Where is that thing? Is it this? No modern silos. Uh, yeah, right here. We're at a ray of hope. 
Oh, I didn't notice that the text changed or did that. I don't know. It was probably hours ago. <laughs> hours ago in game time that that happened. Or not game time, in playing game time. Hold on a sec. Okay, so what's this say here before it changes? President Glenn has inspired curiosity and cautious optimism in the American people. Their electoral mandate was decisive and some are confident their policies will reinvigorate America's self-confidence. Nevertheless, the nation is still in a psychological quagmire and the humiliation on the Akagi still clouds their minds. It remains to be seen what the ultimate outcome of these President Glenn efforts will be. Eight days. Eight days, people. We're going to go 100% prepared, like I said. I invested in the suits. We're going to invest in everything. We're going to do what we got to do. Or whatever gets us to 100. I don't know if we'll invest in everything. They'll probably put us over 100. But but uh, it'll be good. It'll be good. Come on. Come on. I'll tell you, if there's one thing this campaign taught me, it's that I need to play with the software slash hardware on my computer more because we were able to start going faster on the calendar after that slow bit a little bit there. Uh, so... Preparedness by 10. Yeah, we don't need better mission rewards. It's, it's as good as it gets, man. You know. Okay, we're going to upgrade that. So that's going to be a 10. That puts us to 80. Um, this will be 85. Oh, and then that's all we could do for now. Dang it. 85. Then we could construct custom facilities. We'll be at 85. Or we could just run diagnostic simulations, and that'll get us to... Um, 100%. That'll take 40 days. The c custom... Yeah, okay. So we're going to run the diagnostic um, simulations. And uh, you know what? Add on the deep space communications. If we can do that at the same time, then fine. Let's do it. Very fun. Nuclear disarmament negotiations. For decades since man split first split the atom the great powers of the world have amassed ever increasing stockpiles of nuclear warheads nuclear warheads these warheads could end the world several times over yet they presently sit idle in missile silos aircraft hangars and submarines a, as new anti-ballistic missile technology develops the cost of modernizing our stockpiles and reacting to new developments begins exponentially multiplying president close uh glenn knows that we have no choice but to either live in peace die in pieces or go bankrupt as our stockpile increases he knows his choice, but it'd be meaningless unless Germany and Japan sign on. Let's set a time and place for all three superpowers to sit down and discuss the escalation, present our argument for everyone stepping back from the brink, and hope that Germany and Japan can see reason. There will be many issues that could complicate the talks, such as the deterrence argument, fears about Italy and India's nuclear ambitions, the security of the sphere and uh, the Russian front, and the Japanese fears of a successful U.S. invasion. We will have to be prepared to respond to all of these concerns should we hope to end this world-threatening Mexican standoff once and for all. But the Mexicans aren't involved. <laughs> I'm just joking around, y'all. Selecting a venue. So it looks like maybe we're not going to quite be able to capstone things with Mars. Um, at least not the way I meant. Upgrade to the suit. I'm sorry, didn't I just do that? Didn't I just upgrade to the suit? Okay, fine, we'll do that. I get it. Could have sworn I just had. And we're going to run some diagnostic simulations. So that's going to kill 40 days. Uh, we're just taking this because, like, yeah, there's there's nothing else to take. We're, we're pretty much done. We just have to have the eagle land. And we'll get something called a new dawn. That's interesting. A time for choosing. It goes without saying. The talk should be held on neutral ground. Uh, Indian, Italy are rising powers that are off limits as well. Yeah, India is not developed yet. <laughs> so we can go to Buenos Aires, Istanbul, or Lhasa. Um, Istanbul is close to Germany. Lhasa is close to Japan and the capital of Tibet. Perfectly nestled in the Nanchin Tengla Mountains. It would be a perfect venue for our talk, and perhaps the serenity and tranquility of the local Buddhist monks could set the negotiators on the path to, pe path to peace. Well, as much as the Latino stuff is fun, uh, let's do Lhasa. You know, for peace. Peace in our time. That's what we're aiming for. Also, let's sabotage their minds while we're at it. No, we don't have to do any of this stuff anymore, so let's go ahead and close that. Uh, we're like two months away from the election. I'm really curious to see who's going to be the last one. Am I going to have to change the, the thumbnail one final time if we get a new president? I wonder who would be coming in behind us. Gore Sr., maybe? I don't know. Huh. 
No, no, no. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, robotics, whatever. What's this? Purchase. Wait, no. Yeah, uh, seventy-five percent. That's almost done. Two more days until. This, okay, so we're gonna get both of these done at the same time. That's nice. Okay, we're at seventy-five. Add on deep community. Oh, so we just keep stacking this forever, basically, if we wanted to. Uh, okay, let's upgrade it again. Or is there a bug? So upgrade the suit. Upgrade it again. I want a suit on the suit, and then a backup suit. Have hey, you heard this new comic, Iron Man? They call it. <laughs> We want that. You know what? I'm pretty sure our GDP is lowering. <laughs> Think of the economy. <sighs> oh, I'm getting tingles. Better industrial expertise. Nice. Forgot that we were improving that. We now have innovative industry. So that's uh, over here. Is that the highest cap? Yep, we have innovative industry, which uh, increases our production efficiency cap and production efficiency gain by 15%, as well as increasing our production efficiency retention by 30%. Wow. Truly on top of the world. What was that? Hold on over here. Uh, okay, so what did I want to do over here? Smother the flames. There will be blood. Yeah, this is dumb. The making of history. They've seen, reason, and agreed to negotiate. Their delegates are already on the way to Lhasa, and our men are packing their bags too. This is already a good sign for the future of these talks, and given that we have the largest nuclear arsenal, we are poised to provide key leadership in the negotiations. The ball is now in our court. I'm sorry, did, not, did I not select this? Or, what? Um, yeah, uh, all that remains once we get to the table in Lhasa is to make the first move. For the first time, in a development that rocked the world, delegates from Germany, Japan, and the USA are on their way to Lhasa to begin talks on a treaty to limit and dismantle their nuclear arsenals. While this has been a long-term goal of President Glenn since the beginning of his administration, few expected the Germans and Japanese to respond favorably. Perhaps it was the rapid expansion of the American nuclear stockpile over the years that inspired the other powers to come to the table. But one way or another, the wheels are now in motion for a first-of-its-kind disarmament treaty. The results of these negotiations remain to be seen, but many are hopeful that this will be the first meaningful step toward world peace. Fingers crossed. Yeah, I bet Nasir is still in that stupid war. Yeah. That's so dumb. Just, that's another bug they just gotta fix. Just little bugs. The little bugs, they don't, you know, don't mean much to overall. Okay, so we're at 90% prepared here. Um, okay, let's try to take the Gemini spacesuit one more time. I don't know what the F is going on here right now. That's going to take 55 days. Get hire some technicians. Yeah, I, I just don't get it. There's something wrong. There's something wrong here. Ooh, don't turn your Mac on the city. Presenting our argument. Everyone's arrived in Lhasa. The Germans look fresh and ready for everything. The Japanese look hesitant, somewhat unsure of our attentions. At least they can all rest assured that as the largest nuclear power, we have the most to sacrifice at these talks. There are two main options for an opening argument to sell the former Axis on disarmament. First is one of pure pragmatism. Our nuclear stockpiles are putting all of us in the red. If we all agree we don't want to launch first strikes, then cutting the cost of our atomic arsenals should be a no-brainer. This argument will prioritize cutting spending on ABM systems and limiting our ICBM stockpiles. This is a more realistic goal and will preserve our advantage in the missile gap. We will only achieve very limited spending reductions in disarmament. The second is more moral and idealistic. We tell the nations point blank that we cannot let a war between the nations and the human race. We're on the brink of destruction, and we all need to step the hell back for the good of mankind. This will lead to massive disarmament and equally massive savings if it works. If not, we may well walk away with nothing. Japan is particularly afraid of us launching an invasion if there is no nuclear deterrent to stop us. So these guys are, yeah, we're dealing with a fascist and an ultra-nationalist. We're going to have to be pragmatic about it. Pragmatic. I don't care if the public doesn't like it. They're going to love, they're about to love me what I'm about to do. 10 days this will be right before the election we'll launch Ares 4 and then and then just by mass acclaim everyone will say like just we don't need the election anymore and you know we haven't gotten events like primary events so I'm sure that there's no extra thing so it doesn't matter we're gonna be on Mars by the end of the thing by the you know launching the Ares 4 okay 
five days, five days. And we're going to launch. <sighs> Been a long time coming, baby. Change is going to come. Mm -hmm. Smoke through the flames. I guess let's just do, just do something earlier here. No, no, actually, we don't need to. We don't need to at all. Let's just wait to do the uh, thing. The new Lafayette. Lafayette. I'm taking this horse by the reins, making red coats, red with blood stains, and I'm never going to stop till I make a drop. Yep, that's what I was afraid of. It didn't count it. <sighs> we can test the rocket. That'll take 30 days. You know what? What's the point if we're not nervous, right? So we're just going to launch it. We're just doing it. 90%. Everybody's screaming now at the screen. <laughs> Dancing above the stars. We've read this before. The frontier continues to be pushed back. And soon we will have our reward. They're going to have somehow zoomed out to Mars that freaking quickly. Um, no longer getting the effects of the civilian austerity. The launch of Ares 4. Today was the day. The beginning of NASA's next golden age. Starting at 30 minutes to countdown, every television set in the United States was tuned in to see the launch of Ares 4. One of the biggest projects in NASA history. The rocket is expected to land it on Mars once to land on Mars once it takes off into the stratosphere. At 15 minutes to launch, the American public watches with bated breath, not knowing whether the launch would fail or succeed. Only time will tell as the astronauts on board await the final countdown. Five, four, three, two, one. In a matter of moments, the rocket boosters ignite, and with well over a few million Americans tuned in, Ares 4 takes off from the launch pad. The launch is a great success as the rocket eventually fades into the darkness of space. Americans from coast to coast all rejoice at the Space Administration's historic accomplishment. Even though, oh my god, it's going to take 270 days before it reaches the Mars landing, American patriotism soars as the country now houses its own horse in the huge in the space exploration um, race. He, there's a huge celebration alone. He looks up at Mars and smiles, his gl champagne glass held out as if he is asking the constellations to dine with him. Mission complete, if only I could have seen it. Um... Okay, anti-ballistic missiles are surface-to-air missiles designed to intercept. Uh, the Zeus, Spartan, and Sentinels have cost us a fortune. They're throwing a lot of money into them, too. We could just say we're going to stop doing it. Um, they need to be banned. Let's not overplay our hand. Limit the ABM stockpiles. Uh, okay, then we're just going to limit the stockpiles. Just limit it. Okay, damn, 270 days. Okay, guys, once we're done with the nuclear negotiation, the nuclear negotiations, uh, what I might just do is um, cut the episode, and then we're going to come back when it's done. In the meantime, let's sing. Ground control to Major Tom. Commencing countdown engines on. Oh, let's see. Collaboration with Kingdom of Egypt. Uh, we support the rebels across the Arab world. Such an effort. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, who cares? Uh, yeah. Check transmission and may God's love be with you. Mission rewards. 20 public support. America's heart lies with the astronauts. Oh, we can launch things even though they've left. I guess while we wait for them to come back? <laughs> it's like, well, let's... Let's get ready, or whatever. A deal has been reached. It's expensive, but prohibiting them entirely was never a realistic option. Costs will be slightly reduced. We, re we figure about 200 million. Wow, amazing. Mm. Okay, let's increase our party's unity. Yeah, we got 84 senders. Yeah, as you can see, there was no election. So, huh. Now, is that like the end, the end? Or was that just us figuring the ABMs out? Or is there more to this peace deal? I don't actually know. You know what? Let's give it like a week. So I guess once we're in December. And if we don't see anything, then I'm going to do a cut. And we're gonna, just going to come back when we've landed on Mars. <sighs> hell of a game. Hell of a game. I guess we could just do something or whatever, spread the cash, like Namibia. 
reap new victories. Operation Desert Sea Shield. Why does that sound so familiar? <laughs> I like the idea of guns for democracy. Yeah, we'll smother the flames. That's what we're trying to do right now, isn't it? With our little nuclear treaty. Nuclear. Nuclear treaty. Nuclear treaty. Just think, if the Aryan Brotherhood had gone Hyperborean 1 by now, though, they, maybe they could have been attacking Germany and going into the Middle East and stuff by now. <laughs> I just thought they didn't why didn't they go after Kazakh? Aren't they supposed to have decisions to go down here? Like it's part of the former Soviet Union. Hmm. Yeah, it was just a just a thought I had. The wealth of Orenburg. The Euro League is one of the most battle hardened soldiers in Russia, having survived decades of bloodshed and proving their worth against warlords, bandits, German deserters, and NKVD divisions. That valuable experience is now put at our service by incorporating their veterans in our army. Our units are now being commanded by some of the most experienced men in the Russian ray of war. <gasps> oh my god! Assassin strikes at the president. Early this morning, as President Glenn was briefing the press on the progress of the negotiations, a small man in a gray coat launched forward from the crowd of supporters, brandishing a small pistol and fired at the president. Miraculously, the bullets nearly grazed his coat. Oh, jeez. Um, the assailant was swiftly tackled by nearby reporters and hauled away for questioning by the Secret Service. Oh, man. What a plot twist that would have been. Whew. The president was swiftly rushed to safety and the building was placed on lockdown. The man in custody promised to immediately write out a confession of his entire plot and asked for his pin and a piece of paper. Unfortunately, when we gave him his pin after he was frisked, he immediately bit down on the nub. The man was dead before his body hit the floor, apparently a case of intentional cyanide poisoning. The man has been identified as Mr. Ernst Gottlieb, a native of the German Reich. While he had press credentials, he was also in possession of documents indicating he was an intelligence officer within the Wehrmacht. We have sent an urgent request to Germany for an explanation. The talks have been frozen until a decision is made. What the hell is going on? Okay, we're going to stop playing nice with you, Germany. And by playing nice, I mean letting us keep some missiles. Everything must go, probably. I don't know. We'll have to see what the tooltips tell me. <sighs> well, our debts no longer double our GDP. Goodness. Oy, oy, oy. Uh, Germany blames Burgundy. He says that they're forgeries and that it was Heinrich Himmler's Burgundian SS attempting to sabotage the talks. Because while Burgundy remains de jure a part of the Reich, it has been de facto independent. Himmler has been seen as a traitor of Germany. They don't know why Burgundy would want to sabotage disarmament talks. They suspect that Burgundy has staged a false flag attack to damage Germans' international reputation and save chaos within the German government in anticipation of a second Himmlerite putsch. That actually kind of makes sense, because isn't that Burgundy's whole thing? It's like the Black Sun nuking everybody. Um... Huh. There's a conspiracy theory, yet why would they want to assassinate? The choice is yours. Alright, we're going to continue the talks. Let's see here. Shadow State. Yeah, doesn't, doesn't, isn't Burgundy like all of their, so yeah, it's just all, <laughs> it's all the same name over and over. I might have to do this in a live stream, so, uh, so just for the chat spam, which I'm sure will not annoy me. The talks will continue. The clock retreats further from midnight. I'm going to be so annoyed if it turns out we're going to have had to do all this so that the Egypt war would stop. Uh, oh, we hit the thing. Uh, no, no, no. No, we are going to continue. Alright, so I guess that's when the game ends, usually. Uh, larger nuclear stockpile. None shall threaten us again. Okay, this is just like telling me again that I've got uh, apocalyptic or whatever. Okay, so the game ends in 76. That's good to know, at least right now. <laughs> um, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna get this Mars mission thing. Worst case scenario, I'll hit a console command to uh to get us there or whatever when did we launch shoot i forgot yeah we were launching like in november weren't we that's how it timed out so 270 days that's like more than three quarters of the year okay uh icbm 
Convert them to teacher cheaper SLBMs. Uh, compromise has a better chance. So yeah, convert them to SLBMs. Okay. So it was November. Let's call it two thirds. So we got to go eight months. So November, December, January, February, March, April, May, June. So like by June of 77. Question of conversion. Uh, Germany will, the Kriegsmarine has always been an afterthought. When faced with an impossible proposal, they will have to do it. These all seem like just kind of, what do you call them? Perfunctory, not perfunctory. We're just going to say that only 100. Uh, but like, these are all just symbolic numbers because I'm sure that we all have way more than 300 ICBMs right now. <laughs> So this is mostly symbolic, but I just want the peace treaty to go through, whatever it is. We can expand on it later, now that we're in the Glenn's third term via acclamation. Uh, 100 years, President Glenn. Dot com. Golden ratio. Uh, requiring leftover warheads to be scrapped. This would result in a tidy sum of extra savings. Demanding too much could shock the Japanese. They provide, they've proposed a nuclear freeze. This would prevent the construction of new nuclear weapons. This would end the arms race and be a great boon to us. Uh, let's say two to one. Let's meet them in the middle. This is good. This is something that's you know, keeping keeping things going while uh, while the Mars mission is, is, is out there. This actually is timed out very nicely, I think. Uh-huh. Hmm. That oil crisis is still going on, isn't it? Yep. <sighs> That's whatever. Did uh did they ever get the oil up and running out here though? Because I remember they were in nope, nope, not in Iran, not in Kuwait, not in Iraq. Oh, when did that happen? The United Arab Republic. They fused with the Syrians. I don't even remember seeing that happen, or there probably was an event, I don't know. There's just so much. Huh. Hmm. Man, I've got to go outside for a little bit after this. More than just regular exercise. <laughs> Get some fresh air. Just today and yesterday has basically just been dedicated to this campaign. Not counting that five-hour fiasco I got lost on yesterday afternoon. Hmm. Stabilize the situation. Guns for democracy. The final confirmation, a testament to our negotiating prowess. They have agreed with no objections to our conversion deal and signed the treaty without hesitation. The world can rest easy knowing the arms race is finally over, and we hope this will inspire further dentant between the nuclear powers and even greater funding opportunities for mass NASA. Well done, Mr. President. Nuclear stockpiles will reduce. Are we still apocalyptic, though? <laughs> Probably. We're only 80.75 out of the 240 to get us into a higher thing here. Hmm. I'm going to, uh, let's, let's kind of figure out, let's simplify some of these fractions here. So right now we've got 613 uh, we're just going to round it down. 613 billion GDP compared to... Uh, hold on a second. Okay, yeah, so... I'm, I'm doing I'm doing a, a, a fraction converter right now because right now my brain's a little fried to do it myself. But we've got 316 over 1219, which is a, a simplified to... Um, let's convert that to a percentage... Uh, so basically, we're at 50.287120059% of our debt. That's how much is GDP. So what we'll do is when we land on Mars, we'll, we'll simplify the fraction again to uh, see if we're at least trending in a direction where debt is being reduced. The civilian austerity is going on. We didn't lower the military spending. Let's fix that. Huh. Annual revenue of 140 
134.89. You know, just to get a sense of down the line how things are going. And in the end, yeah, still 20% NASA public approval rating. Rough stuff. Really rough stuff. Uh, but we're going to give this to the end of the month. If we don't get any other events that are popping up, uh, I'll do a cut and we'll come back when we've landed on Mars. Even though I can barely easily make this series an even 40 by just stopping here and then in the next episode, you know, just continue chit chatting until we hit 40. Or until we hit Mars and, you know, that'll be the 40th. You know what? The after action report will be the 40th episode. That's perfect. Ha ha ha! All right. So, uh, let's see. Alien processing. Hmm. Guns for democracy choosing. Let's go with the liberal option, and I guarantee you, if we look at the, uh, what's this nuclear commission thing? Yeah, we're done with all of that. Um, I guarantee you, if we look at the constitution of the uh, the comp composition, not constitution, the composition of the Supreme Court is still going to say 5-3. Yep, five conservatives, four liberals. Nothing new under the sun. Okay, wait, we're at 616. Let's actually do a quick update, just to even like in the, what, it's been a month since I checked. Let's check that again. So now we're at 614 over 1225. Oh, yeah, that's not... Um, that's that's not going in the right direction. So we went from 50.28 to 50.12. So it is in fact getting worse. Um, our debt, like we, it's it's almost stagnated, but but it's worse. There, there's just no getting around it. Um, send the experts. Like I don't know. Maybe if if we can upgrade the daring to dream. No, that's not going to help. Like the only thing that's going to help is getting the poverty rate up some more. Professional army. We can get to Spartan discipline eventually. That's interesting. Hmm. Okay, yeah, but we're just going to come back when we hit Mars. Okay, everybody, it's June, so uh, we're coming back just because I think this is about when it should happen. Um, I have received the, uh, the console command. In case, because it's technically after the end of the game, something's happened where we're not going to get the event. Um, uh, also, I've just been, uh, you know, helping refugees guns for, for democracy and stuff. So, like, you get some things down here so we can send, like, rifles to, to the Revolutionary Council and stuff. Um, I think we're just going to send everything to them. No reason not to in their dumb, invisible war. Uh... But has anything else happened besides that? Not particularly, I think. So yeah, we're just this is. I'm, I just came back in case there's going to be a super event, um, so that we don't miss it with me going ah ah and you know just trying to get back on the thing. Uh huh. This is going to be something. Hmm. It's good to know I can go so deep into a Hearts of Iron 4 game um, without... Okay, no more military austerity. Let's, uh, let's do that math again. So right now we're at 618 over 1246. Wait, no, I did that wrong. 618 divided by 1246. Um, convert that to a percentage. Yeah, it's getting worse. We're now under 50%. That's how it'd be, I guess. So now we can do humanitarian things, I guess. Drop propaganda, lead flits and things. In Egypt. <laughs> Defeat the invisible enemy! Do your part! Okay. And if we get to, like, past July... What we're going to do is if we hit July 4th and we haven't gotten the event, I'm just going to trigger the console command. Because uh, I just don't know because we got the game over screen if, if those things are going to be going through properly.
Mm. Yeah, I don't have to save up for like a nicer processor or something for the PC. Just have to make sure that I'm using the one I have now more efficiently. Besides, I hear that Hearts of Iron 4 only gets so much faster whenever you're doing the, um, you, you know, Hearts of Iron. It's just not optimized in a certain way. Like, it doesn't matter if you have, like, a 4-core processor or an 8-core or, or, a, or a 16 core. It's just, like, um, it's just not gonna do that much for you. It's not an efficient game when you get right down to it. Okay, uh, three more days and we're just gonna... We're going to trigger it manually. Because it was November, right? So, yeah, November. Let me do the math again. November. Or the numbers again. November, December, October, November. Wait, well, did I say November, December? No, yeah, wait, yeah. November, December, January, because then it loops around. Uh, February, March, April, May, June, July. Well, it could be nine months, actually. Three quarters of a... Oh, you know what? I've got the little thing open right now. Let's do the math. So, 270. Wait, whoops. Did the math wrong. Hold on. 270 over 365 is a percent, as a percentage, is 73. So, actually, no, it's more like three quarters. Okay. So, then it would be nine months. I good at math. Um, hold on. What is this? Oh, yeah, we could send more stuff. M.E. Deniable Arms Shipments. Huh. Okay, so then if we need my nine months, then November, December, January, February, um, March, April, May, June, July. So at the end of July. So how about we make it sometime in August? If in August we haven't hit it yet, then, uh, then I'll come in. <coughs> Again, 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 so much thanks goes out to you guys for your patience for this long series. It's been an unbelievable ride. Oh, come on, get there. Kind of, We're kind of stuttering now, though. <laughs> but we will get there. Hopefully. Oh, Caesar. You're right. We can't end the. Uh, uh, you know, we can't. We can't have the series without you ending at the end. Even though it's definitely not time for you to eat yet. <laughs> Hand of kindness is done. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see here. Desert shield. How funny. One constant has been the use of air power by outside power sinking to bolster their proxies in the Arab world. Such air power has given them an advantage, but it has also had disastrous consequences for civilians on the ground. No longer. Using aircraft carriers stationed in the Indian Ocean, we can declare a series of no-fly zones over conflict areas. It will certainly be a slap in the face to powers like Italy, who have enjoyed years of uninterrupted hegemony in Arab skies. But countless lives will be saved, and American prestige will surely be bolstered. Hmm. National Spirit, no supply zone, recovery goes up, damage reduction against cast goes up as well. Okay. Huh. Okay, uh, so we're about to hit August. So, like, August 8th, again, I guess we'll say. Because it was mid, it was mid-November, yeah, like, around, somewhere around the election season. Let's make it August, like, 11th. Or 12th, actually. 8-12. Yeah, yeah, there you go. That's a nice fraction. Three quarters. Three quarters for three quarters of the year. August 12th is when we are go. How are you, Caesar? Come here. Oh, your fur is always so nice to feel, Caesar. This is it! This is it! The dream has been fulfilled! The result of a journey that lasted months would now be concluded in eight minutes. Mission control was silent, where it had been a hub of fervent activity just moments ago. They had completed their task. The rest was in the hands of the astronauts. In just eight minutes, the world would know if Ares IV would be a tremendous victory or a terrible tragedy. Oh, I sent it with 90, what was I thinking? 
Sometimes the most defining part of a person's life lasts only a few moments. Neil Armstrong, commander of Ares IV, knew full well that these would be the most important moments of his life. Parachutes deployed. David Cross continued to monitor the lander's altitude. Armstrong's hand trembled as he engaged the decisive retro, decisive's retro rockets and prepared for final approach. Despite a furious shaking of the cabin, both men took a moment to take in the view. The Mellis Chasma had a quiet beauty to it, a landscape of deep grooves and red sand. Oh, boy. Um, we're really here, aren't we? Cross posed, uh, posed, not moving his hands an inch from his control paddle. We really are, Armstrong affirmed his grip on the joystick and took them in. Neil Armstrong descended from the lander and became the first human to set foot in, uh, step foot onto a new world. From our earliest days, mankind has looked up and dreamed of walking amongst the stars. Today, that dream has been fulfilled. After this, the streets had erupted into beautiful chaos. Traffic halted as people crowded the roads. Firework de detonations had become near constant. The moon landing had ensured America's spot within the space race. Landing on Mars had reinvigorated the American spirit. The future was finally looking bright. From within NASA's mission control, John Glenn stood. Cheers erupted as the landing was confirmed. Glenn watched the man on Mars, smiled, and began to cry. President Glenn's mood matched the nation's as he sat behind his desk. Glenn smiled as the address started. To the many people of the world, to my fellow Americans, today we have achieved the impossible. One small step for man. Replace the stars are ours with conquered frontier. More political power gain, stability, and war support. Plus 67%. Oh, super event. did it we did it and what a beautiful quote Tsiolkovsky I've talked about him in other series before the earth is the cradle of humanity but mankind cannot stay in the cradle forever the journey begins cancel this desert shield crap oh my goodness the eagle has landed we have dared to attempt the impossible, and now, thanks to the tireless work by NASA and the Glenn administration, we have done it. For the first time in human history, a man has stepped upon the surface of another world and returned safely to our soil. The nation has effectively shut down with riotous celebrations held across the country and a ticker tape parade held for the crew of Ares 4 in New York City. Calls of congratulation have come from leaders across the world, including everyone from our allies in the OFN to the Prime Minister of Japan. The flight crew have described themselves as the happiest men on the planet, but the White House staff knows better. The happiest man in the world sits in the Oval Office, half listening to the terse congratulations of the Fuhrer, basking in America's greatest triumph of the century. And uh, then we're gonna get we get a new we get we got the new effect. Uh, we get remove a new dawn, two hundred political power. Plus 10% stability, plus 5% war support. No more New Dawn stuff. It's just straight up, we're awesome. No more negatives. Oh, I didn't read the little thing. Um, or yeah, New Dawn. Here it is here before. Okay, yeah. It's morning again in America under the leadership of President Glenn. Our country is prouder, stronger, and better. Now talks. Now we now talk about the American dream without a hint of sarcasm. For the first time in decades, our country has something to believe in. And defeat is just a dying memory. That's going to go away because it's still got negative effects. Um... Okay, yeah, so it should go away, or are we just not going to get the effect? Um, I don't know, but we did it, everybody. We did it. Um, conquered Frontier. A sense of wonder has enraptured the nation as the United States truly unites over our successful Mars landing. Americans flood the streets to celebrate, sending uncountable fireworks to join their stars. This moment will enter the annals of this great nation as one of our greatest achievements. 
and with this being an extra long 45 minute episode we're going to end it there i might do an ar but goodness gracious i need to go outside see the sun and shower and stuff but what an amazing amazing series thank you very much to the new order team that created it um everybody who was involved from developers to play testers to modders this was all so amazing and especially an especially big thank you to everybody especially in discord who has ever helped me uh, with this campaign with the bugs talking about glenn guy some guy ray the tortle um all of you anybody i forgot um god it's like i'm accepting an oscar over here but <laughs> uh yeah you guys were great we're gonna do an aar later but effectively this is the finale of the series I hope that I've started a new one before this has ended, um, or whatever. I'm gonna, but I'm gonna finally be able to update my Steam. And <laughs> I've been, I've been offline for like a couple of weeks, I think, or at least a week. Um, Happy New Year! It's, we should be like a month into it now. It's probably February. Hope everything's going well. And uh, this is Conquering History Games signing off.